Hey everybody, Arnaldo Wofferman with Arceus Media Master Video Manuals. In the last video, I discussed a little bit on timecode and how easy it is to be able to trigger. I'm going to jump straight into this, so if you don't understand what I'm doing, please make sure to watch the previous timecode, including where you can download SMPT timecode if you don't already have some. I want to really talk to you now about, or I want to talk to you now about the Q player because you can really synchronize your show up and do some incredible things using Q player. And you can even stack things and just do a little bit more than what you would normally expect to do. But let's go ahead and get down to the very basics of it. This is a very simple show that I have created each sequentially following the previous queue. But now if we're going to go to timing, you'll see where it says follow. We're going to change time code. We're going to select time code and notice that it changes obviously from follow to time code on the actual window part itself. You can mix and match videos if you need to as well as far as, you know, being able to have some on time code, some automatically play. Once you understand the basics of it, you'll be able to mix and match and do all sorts of creative things. But for now, let's go ahead and do the time code only jumping from one to the other. Now, all these videos here are set to automatically play, meaning they are not set to time code, but you can trigger them via time code as well. Uh, for simplicity purposes, we're going to keep it just like that. So now on the time code, on timing, you'll see that it allows me to set the duration. We have 10 seconds, 43 milliseconds, right? That's the actual duration of the actual clip. Um, you have three seconds, so we'll just go ahead and leave it for 10 seconds. We'll do another 10 seconds, another 10 seconds, actually 16, whatever, that's fine, another 10 seconds. So now the next part is time code. This is basically saying at what point do I want this to jump to this particular video? Uh, so in this case, we're going to have the time code the reference queue is, of course, zero. And the time code part where I want it to jump in, we'll just do 10 seconds. We're going to do 15. Actually, let's do 25 seconds. We're going to do 35 seconds. And just for craps and giggles, we're going to do one minute and five seconds. Just like that. So now we're going to go ahead and hit play. You'll see it jumps up right away. Ten seconds, and this immediately goes in. This is very important. As you could see, there was that moment of black because I have this starting at 25 seconds and this cue ended beforehand. So this particular cue is not going to play until the time or the next cue right now. You'll see it's black again. It's not going to play until it gets into 35 seconds. So let's go ahead and wait for that. Here we go. There it is right there. So now I can stop the queue if I need to for any reason. I'm going to go ahead and just go right into three seconds, one minute and three seconds, and let's move it. Here we go. All right, so you'll see the queue pretty much automatically will reset itself, and it's ready to go. So if I hit here back to the very beginning, I'm going to hit play. Let's do it one more time so you can see this in action. Next cue. Again, I can stop over here. And you're going to see the cue obviously continues playing. But once it stops, it goes into black. Now, what this does not do is if I go back into here, it's not going to re trigger that previous cue. And it's not going to replay that original cue because of the timing mode. And what I, mean by, what I mean by that is that if we go over here, let's stop this for a second. If we go here into the timing, there's the reference cue. It obviously plays right after this cue. So restarting the time code currently does not allow me to restart that from the very beginning. 
So let's say you don't like where it goes into black, right? We're just going to then hit hold and it's going to hold that cue. Same thing here. So we're going to stop the cue. We're going to hit play. And we're going to reset over here. I'm going to stop it for a moment. Now it's holding that cue. So you're good to go right there. It's not going to disappear on you. But let's hit play again. And as it gets to 10 seconds, it's going to jump into that next cue. Now, you may be asking, okay, hold on, Arnaldo. Why is it doing that? And that is because of the way that I have it set here. So if we go to the very beginning so you can see, this is done to do the uh, remove black as opposed to replace. So if I replace and I put both of these on the same layer, so let me bring that down, bring it back up. There you are. But because it's set to hold the cue, it's going to keep that cue on forever, at least for the rest of the show. So you get the idea. So again, what this does not do is I cannot reset it just by clicking here. Doesn't work like that. This is again more for a pre-synchronized show. So if you need to go back to the very beginning, that's when you hit stop. You re back to zero, zero, hit play. And here we go. So hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit, understanding how the time code works when it comes to the cue player in Media Master. At the time of making this video, we are on version 4.2.3. So obviously new features may come out by the time you watch this, but I will keep you aware of every new feature and all the options as best as I can. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe. And obviously, tell your other event professional colleagues about this tutorial series. If you have any requests or something you'd like to see on Media Master video manuals on my YouTube channel, please let me know, and I'll do my best to get that request fulfilled as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless.